Okay, guys, our next group of fish is called osteichthys. As you're probably already aware, osteo means bone. So these are all of your bony fish. 95% um, of all the fish belong in this class, and they can be found in any type of an environment, uh, ocean, freshwater, brackish, etc. So let's first talk about their scales. Remember the scales on the shark are called placoid scales. These are called tenoid scales. And if you've ever caught a fish to eat it, you actually have to scale it first. So this is the protective covering on there that are loosely attached to the skin, like you can use a spoon or some special tool to remove the scales. Um, and they also have mucus on them. That's why a lot of fish, when you pick them up, they feel kind of slimy. So it's a barrier against inf infection, and it also reduces friction as they swim. And what they've discovered is very similar to like the rings in a tree to tell how old it is. You can do the same thing with a fish, except you do not count every single line. You actually count the bands. So this fish here would be one, two, three, four, five, six, approximately seven years old. And the darker regions and the lighter regions represent like summer and winter growth. So um, the ones that are really close together are winter ones and the ones that are further apart are summer ones. So like this fish did a lot of growing in this particular year right here. Okay, so obviously fish use gills to breathe just like the shark. The main difference is, is the gills are covered by a flap that's called the operculum um, and that protects the gills and it also forces water over them. Um, and the mouth and gills will open and close in unison to get the water uh, to go over the gills. And they also have these things called gill rakers, which are these things here represented by these green dots or showing by the green dots that um, divert food into the esophagus instead of over the gills so it can damage it. Okay, so locomotion, um, you know they have the ability to swim very well. Um, they have a, the same set of fins that the shark has. Um, pectoral and pel pelvic are on the um, ventral side. Um, they allow movement in all directions. The dorsal and anal fins are for stabilization. Um, and then this tail fin here, the caudal fin, is what actually propels them forward. Okay, so their um, speed in the water actually is determined by their fins and their shape. So if it is an open water fish, they're usually the faster ones, the pelagic ones. Um, it's called a fusiform shape, which is very similar to a torpedo. And the um, shape of the tail and how they move the tail causes a, a vortex which can actually thrust them forward and the temperature of the water actually determines how fast they are too. If there's warmer temperatures they can move faster and if they're colder they move slower and they're nearly all ectothermic which means they are cold-blooded so the temperature of their surroundings affects their temperature. Okay, so the buoyancy, remember the sharks had that really oily liver that helped them um, regulate their position in the water? Sharks actually have something called a swim bladder or an air bladder, um, and it actually fills with gas, and the muscles cause it to shrink uh, or expand, and that helps them obviously sink or rise, and um, it helped, uh, let's see if I can see it here, it's right here, but she's, whoever this person is, is poking at um, so as it increases, they rise in the water. As it decreases, they sink in the water. Okay, their mouth parts are actually um, evolutionary design for the kind of food that they eat. Some fish are parasites. Um, some strain or filter feed. Um, some nibble, some crush, some are predators. So I'm sure you've seen these variety of fish um, either in the wild or at a pet store or something. So depending on what they have, um, adapted to is what their mouth looks like and what they eat from. Okay, so digestion, um, they have a one-way digestive tract just like we do. It starts from the mouth, esophagus, stomach, intestines, anus, out. So one way, meaning it goes in one way and out a, a different way, um, one track. Okay, they have kidneys just like we do. Um, their heart like all fish, is two-chambered, which means it has one atria and one ventricle, where ours is four-chambered. We have two of each. 
and they have a closed circulatory system. So that means all of their blood is kept in veins and arteries, just like us. Okay, sensitivity. You remember that lateral line system that sharks have? Um, fish have the same thing. They do not have that ampullae of Lorenzini, however, but they do have um, a well-developed nervous system. They have good vision. Um, some fish can actually see color. They have a good sense of hearing because they have external, I'm sorry, internal ears. Um, their swim bladder can sense vibrations also. And then they also have uh, nostrils, so they can detect small amounts of chemicals and swim away from them if they need to. Okay, so reproduction, most fish, everything is external. So there are separate males, separate females. Um, they release the sperm and egg into the water, which is called spawning. I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. There are some fish that actually have live birth, like guppies. So that means theirs is actually internal. So they have five stages in their life cycle, an egg, a larva, um, a juvenile stage, a, a pre-juvenile stage, and then adulthood. And sometimes we call baby fish fry, F-R-Y. Okay, so here is just a joke about that. She looks more like milkman than me, but this is a picture of this school of fish here spawning. So they basically just release the sperm and egg into the water and what happens happens. Okay, so some unusual adaptations in fish, and a lot of these are actually found in the ocean. Um, puffer fish have the ability to do that to protect themselves. Um, it's also similar to a porcupine fish. Some of them have unusual camouflage adaptations. A sargassum fish looks a lot like the seaweed that it lives in. Flounder and halibut are flat, so they can lay on the bottom and camouflage. Um, seahorses, terrible, terrible swimmers, but they have this tail that helps them grab onto things. Um, a flying fish doesn't really fly, it just kind of glides, just like a flying squirrel. Um, sunfish, it's very big, round, it's hard for predators to get it. Um, grunions, remember those are the ones that go on shore and release their egg and sperm during high tides and stuff. And then some deep sea fishes, which have to have adaptations for low light and stuff, dragonfish, anglerfish, viperfish. These are kind that you've seen on Nemo. Um, it's amazing to me that these things actually survive. Look, his tooth actually went through his lip here. Okay, so that's all I wanted to mention to you guys about uh, fish. So I will attach um, some assignments here, and I hope you guys are doing well. Email me if you have any questions.